Chapter 7, Section 4, Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. This one comes after multiply and divide because it's a little bit more difficult to add and subtract fractions than it is to multiply and divide fractions. When you add or subtract, two rational expressions depend on whether the expressions have like or unlike denominators. To add or subtract rational expressions with like denominators, simply add the numerators or subtract. But if they don't have the same denominator, they need to have a common denominator. This is where we'll come into like least common multiple. Uh, but as we get into these rational expressions, when it's expressions of stuff and not just numbers, then what we're going to do is everybody has to have everybody. Okay. So here's an example down here with fractions. A over C plus B over C. Since they have the same denominator, you just add the tops. But if it was A over C plus B over D, we can't add those yet. We'd have to have a common denominator. Now, there's nothing common between C and D, especially because we don't know what they are. So the common thing would be to have both in the bottom. I can establish that by multiplying the AC by D over D, which is a 1, so it doesn't change the value, just change the look. So I get AD over CD. And the B times C over C, which is a 1. So I've got BC over CD. I get that common denominator, and then it's AD plus BC. Okay? So let's look at it as a fraction. If I have 1 half plus 3 halves, that's easy. 2 is already there. So it's just 1 plus 3 over 2, or 4 over 2. And then I'd reduce it. Okay? But if it's 1 half plus 1 third... They don't have like denominators. The next thing a 2 can be is a 4, which a 3 can't. The next thing after that is a 6. That's what a 3 can be. So I would multiply this by 3 over 3 and 2 over 2. So it's 3 over 6, 1 half, plus 2 over 6, 1 third. 3 plus 2 over 6 equals 5 over 6. So 1 half plus 1 third becomes 5 sixths. We have to put it into common pieces. We're going to apply that to things with expressions. Now, these ones are nice. The denominators are already the same. 4x and 4x. So all we have to do is 7 plus 3. So that's 10 over 4x. Now, they have a common thing. I can put a 2 into both of them. So I'm going to take out the 2, and it ends up just like that, where x is not equal to 0. You do have to watch out for things that X cannot be. Now, they don't do that in the book right away, but it is true. You have to set what X can't be. We got X plus 6. We got X plus 6. They're subtracting. So it becomes 2X minus 5 over X plus 6. Now, we should look to see if anything can come out of the 2X minus 5 or the X plus 6 and reduce, but nothing can. So X can't be negative 6. Here's some for you to try. Let's give it a go. Pause it, try it, come back. All right, like denominators. So we got eight minus five over 12x, which is three over 12x. Three goes into 12 once and four times, so that's one over four x. And x can't be zero, okay? They're both 3x squared, that's okay. So then it becomes 3 over 3x squared. 3's drop, so 1 over x squared, and x can't be 0. They already are, oh, let's go change the colors here. They already are x minus 2, so 4x minus x over x minus 2, which is 3x over, oops, don't need that, over x minus 2. And x can't be 2. x plus x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1, they're the same. So it's just 2x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1. The top, I could factor out a 2, leaves me x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Those reduce out, leaves me with just 2. And x can't be uh well, it can't be I. 
because if you subtract the one over and you square root it, square root of negative one is i. That one gets kind of weird, but that's okay. To add and subtract two rational expressions with unlike denominators, that's what I was talking about earlier. Find a common denominator. Rewrite each rational expression using a common denominator, then add or subtract. That's what I went over earlier. See, here's the example. A over C plus B over D. Put them both, make it a common denominator, then subtract them. You can always find a common denominator of two rational expressions by multiplying the denominators as shown above. You just multiply them by each other. However, when you use the least common denominator, which is the least common multiple of the denominators, simplifying your answer may take fewer steps. You can always just multiply the one on the left times the denominator on the right and the one on the right times the denominator on the left, top and bottom, and you'll have a common denominator. But if you can do the least common multiple, it'll help you in simplifying later. To find the least common multiple of two or more expressions, factor the expressions completely. The least common multiple is the product of the highest power of each factor that appears in any of the expressions. So, if we were doing, let's go back and look. Um, let's say we're doing one fourth plus one sixth. I could multiply this side by six over six and this side by four over four, and I get six over 24 plus four over 24, which makes eight over 24, which makes one third. Or instead, with the one fourth, I know that that's two times two, and the one sixth, I know that's two times three. They have a two in common. The parts they're missing, this one needs a three, and this one needs another two. This one has two twos, that one only has one two. So it becomes three over 12 plus two over 12, which is five over that shouldn't be right. 3 over 12 plus 5 over 12. It's 2 over 12. Why is my math weird? 32. 5 twelfths. We should have got 5 twelfths on this one. Why didn't I do that? Oh, there we go. Because my math's bad. This is how you check your answer. 6 plus 4 is not 8. It's 10. And what goes into both of those is 2. 2 goes 5 times and 12 times. Ha ha. Now they both work out. Helps if you do your math right. Happens to everyone. Always check your work. Okay. But it simplifies a little easier. I didn't even have to simplify when I did this problem because they were already as least as they could be. When I just multiply times each denominator, it's not always the least. So I'll have to reduce later. You can do it either way. I don't really care. But when it comes to expressions... Multiplying 4x squared minus 16 times 6x squared minus 24x plus 24 is going to get a little big and a little messy. So what would be better is you find their least common multiple. Okay, That's what we want to look for first. So if we take 4x squared minus 16 and we break it apart, we can factor out a 4, which leaves us with x squared minus 4. And then we can factor out that difference of squares, so x plus 2 and x minus 2. Those are all the factors of 4x squared minus 16. If we then take, I'll go back a color here, 6x squared minus 24x plus 24, we get 6 times x squared minus 4x plus 4, which becomes 6 times x and x, and factors of 4 that add to 4 is 2. And we can see here, okay, things they have in common. They both already have this much. But what they need is the same amount from each other. So the least common multiple, okay, is going to be the parts that are left over. And we even need to probably take apart the 6, make it a 2 times a 3, and take apart the 4, make it a 2 times a 2. They also have a 2 already in common. So their least common multiple, the next thing that they can all both be, is all of the parts together. So it's the things they have in common, and the things that they don't.
The things they have in common get listed once, and the things they don't have in common all get listed. That's how that would work. So you just have to fill in the pieces that they don't have. So for instance, on the top one, it has a two and a two. It needs a three, and it needs another x minus two. On the bottom one, it has a two and a three, and an x minus two and an x minus two. It needs another two, and an x plus two. Now they are exactly the same. They have all the same pieces. You got a two and a two, a two and a two, a three and a three, a plus two, a plus two, a minus two, a minus two, a minus two, and a minus two. They're all the same. So we have to do that whenever we do unlike denominators with uh, rational expressions. Factor the denominators out so you know what you have and what you don't have, and then multiply the ones by what they need to make the batch. So, 7 over 3 times 3 times x times x plus x over 3 times x, because I can pull out a 3x from both, and that leaves me an x plus 1. Okay. Now, what do they have in common? Well, they both have a 3, they both have an x, What's missing? This side is missing an x plus 1. So we're going to multiply it by x plus 1 on the top and the bottom. This one's missing another 3 and another x. And we have to do it top and bottom. So we've got 7x plus 7 plus 3x squared all over, uh, let's say, 9x squared times x plus 1. Okay. Now, if we could factor it, we should. Let's rearrange it into a better, more... Uh, degree happy situation. So 3x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 9x squared times x plus 1. If we could factor a 9x squared out or we could factor it down to an x plus 1, that'd be good. Let's see. Factors of 21 that add to 7. Mm. 1 and 21 makes 22. 3 and 7 make 10. There aren't any. So it's stuck right there. Now you got to remember that x can't be, let's see, 0 from that 9x squared. And it looks like 0 and it can't be negative 1 either. So we got to watch out for those. The book's not watching out for what x can't be, but you need to keep it in the back of your head. Difference. Now, the difference on difference is that you have to subtract. And that negative that is between those equations gets taken to everybody. I like to just go ahead and take it automatically and turn it into a plus. That really helps out with the situation. It keeps it from being something weird, okay? So I like to just turn it into a plus, but whatever makes you happy. Just remember that when you do that subtract, when it's between those two fractions, it goes to both parts of the numerator. Okay, it's going to transfer to both pieces. So, I'm going to go ahead and take it to both pieces right now and rewrite it. x plus 2 over 2 times x minus 1 plus 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. Just take it to the numerator. Take it to the top. Change both signs. Okay, now, let's factor this guy out. Each one gets an x. Factors of 3 that add to 4 is 2. No, that's not how that works. Is 3 times 1, and they're both negative in this sense. So, this side's missing a 2. So, we need to do a 2 top and bottom. And this side is missing an x minus 3 top and bottom. So let's do the distribute. So 
So on the top up here, we've got x squared minus 3x plus 2x, so that's minus x, minus 6, and we're going to do a big plus, and that's going to be 4x plus 2, and it's all over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, so we've got x squared minus, uh, nope, it's going to be plus 3x minus 4, all over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Now we just need to factor it and see if anything falls out. So, each one gets an x. Factors of 4 that subtract to 3 would be 4 and 1. 4 minus 1 makes a positive 3. We've got an x minus 1 in common, so x plus 4 over 2 times x minus 3. That's our final answer. And x can't be back from the original. It can't be a 1 or a 3. We do need to remember that. Okay. They go with x can't be a 1. I'm not sure why they don't put x can't be a 3 in there. Let's see, 3 squared is 9 minus 12 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So... Yeah, it should also be three. All right, those are tough. So number five, find the least common multiple. So basically find what's missing from both, put it on both, and then figure out what they become. It's basically multiplying each other together. Then find the sum or difference using those different denominators. Give it a pause, give it a try, come back. All right, let's look at number five. Least common multiple. Well, 5x to the third is 5 times x times x times x. You do want to take your number down to primes. Okay. When we look at 10x squared minus 15x, uh, let's see, 5 goes into all of those guys. So does x. So 5 times x. And what's left is 2x minus 3. Uh, they have one of these in common, they have one of those in common. What's missing is 2x minus 3, or those two x's. So the least common multiple is going to be... Oh, which one are we on? 5. Alright, so we've got 5x to the third times 2x minus 3. That's the least common multiple. You can plug all your single primes back together on the outside. All right, let's look at number six. They don't have the same denominator. They don't factor apart. So I literally just need to take seven times both of this side and four X times both of that side. 21 minus four X over 21 X. Does anything go into all of that? 21, 28, 4 times 7 is 28. That's better. Uh, let's see. Nothing goes into 4 and 21. They don't both have an X, so it stays just like that. And X can't be 0. All right, let's try 7. Seven's a little busier. What can we take out of 9X squared minus 12? Well, we can take a 3. That leaves you with 3X squared minus 4. Okay. And we've already got a 3x squared out there. So this side over here is missing a 3x squared minus 4. And this side is missing an x. So we got 3x squared minus 4 plus x squared all over. 3x times 3x squared minus 4. So that becomes 4x squared minus 4 all over 3x times 3x squared minus 4. Now that does come apart a little bit. Uh, let's say we can factor a 4 out of that, which makes it x squared minus 1 over 3x times... 
3x squared minus 4. They're getting quite a different answer than that from us. Oh, because it's supposed to be an x squared. That's why. Which makes this x to the third. Which changes all of this business. There we go. Helps if you do the right amount, right? This is an x squared. We don't have an x squared. We need an x squared. Ah, so we'll back it back up. So, we got x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4. Yep. Okay. Not bad. And then we need to factor it down. We had that part. We got this. Take the 3 out. We just need the x squared. Very good. We need to be able to factor that apart. Doesn't need another x. So... Alright, ways to factor x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4. I'm not seeing any good ways there. <laughs> I think we're pretty stuck there. Now the book goes on to say it's x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared, but I'm not seeing how they get it, because I'm not sure how to factor x to the third plus 3x squared plus 4, or minus 4. You can't do it quadratically, because it's a cube. It's not a sum of cubes or a difference cube, so it can't use the pattern. So maybe you could try to do factor by grouping, but that's not going to work. <laughs> they don't have an X. I say it stops right there. And that's about as good as it gets. Nothing's going to factor out of that bottom anyway, so you might as well leave it together. All right, let's look at number eight. Let's switch colors here. Let's factor the bottoms x and x factors of 12 that subtract to negative 1 would be 3 and 4 we want the 4 to be negative 12 comes out of this one and you get x minus 4 all right so this one needs an x minus oh, plus 3 top and bottom and this one over here needs a 12 top and bottom so we got Let's see, not that color. Stick with green. 12x plus 5x plus 15 all over 12 times x plus 3 times x minus 4. 12x and 5x is 17x plus 15 over 12 times x plus 3 times x minus 4. And we are good. And don't forget, x can't be, back originally, a negative 3 or a positive 4. But that's the main of what they want out of it. Okay? Rewriting a rational expression may reveal properties of the related function and its graph. For example, in 4.7 of section 2, which we didn't do yet, anyway... Uh, but that's the graphing portion. Use long division to rewrite a rational expression. In the next example, you will use... Uh, inspection. So rewriting and graphing a rational function. Okay, rewriting and graphing a rational function. Rewrite the function in the form of x a over x minus h plus k, and then graph it. So all they're trying to do is get to where we can separate these pieces so that 
we can factor them out. Oh, and that actually gave me a clue on what they probably did on this last one. Okay, so let's take x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4. x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4. What we can do with the minus 4 is we can turn it into x to the third uh, plus 3x squared minus 3 minus 1. And then we can rearrange these pieces a little bit. So the x to the third minus 1 is together. And the 3x squared minus 3 is together. Nope, still doesn't work. Still doesn't work. Not the way that I wanted it to. I thought it was going to be able to jump out and uh, get a common denominator thing and do that, but it's not going to work that way. So that's okay. We'll move on. But anyway, what they're doing here is the way they're showing us to rewrite this is they're taking that constant term at the back and they're separating it off so that we can try to eliminate the bottom piece and get just a constant term at the back. So here's what they're doing. They're taking g of x equals 3x plus 5 over x minus, or x plus 1. And they're trying to get an x plus 1 to happen as a factor in a top. So if we could get to where we could factor out some number away from that x, which is going to be a clue right here, 3, we could get rid of that x plus 1 and turn it into a constant term. So we can separate it into this constant out at the back. Okay. Well, what they do is they take the 3x and they go plus 3 plus 2 all over x plus 1. Right? And the, what we can do is we can separate each of those pieces on the top into individual fractions. So we can say 3x plus 3 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x plus 1. Right? If the numerators are adding, they have the same denominators as singles. Then what we can do is take 3 and pull it out of the x plus 3 and make it an x plus 1. And then this eliminates, and we're left with 3 plus 2 over x plus 1. Or the way that they like it to be is 2 over x plus 1 plus 3. This is now a over x minus h plus k. This helps in graphing. A tells you things about the graph. X and H and K tell you things about the graph. They're all important things to know and be able to do. I'm not going to focus on example 5 stuff in the rewriting and graphing because we have Desmos and we're going to graph in there. Okay, But I do want to look at uh, complex fractions. Okay. Complex fraction is a, is a fraction that contains a fraction in its numerator or denominator. A complex fraction can be simplified using either of the methods below. Necessary, simplify the numerator and denominator by writing each as a single fraction. Then divide by multiplying by the numerator, the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Multiply the numerator by the denominator of the least common denominator of every fraction in the numerator and denominator. Then simplify. Man, these look crazy. All right, so this is what we've got here. So what I like to treat this as is you can simplify the one that's the double fraction, but it's just a fraction of a fraction. Okay? It's just a fraction of a fraction. And we have to stay change flip. It's going to stay 5 of x plus 4. I'm going to change it to this, and then we're going to flip the bottom one over. The problem is we don't know what the bottom one is yet completely because we need to add them together. So let's do that least common multiple piece and figure out what the bottom is going to be. So 1 over x plus 4, that's factored, plus 2 over x. Well, what's missing from this one is an x, and what's missing from this one is an x plus 4. So we need to do x plus 4, and we need to do times x. So that's x over x times x plus 4 plus... 2x plus 8. So that becomes 3x plus 8 over x times x plus 4. And then we 
flip it over. X, X plus four, and then three X plus eight. That's a bad eight. This is tough stuff, so stay with me. So all we did was we took this and turned it into that. This is a divide line. So we take that first fraction, we stay, we take the sign, we change it to multiply, and we flip the other one over. Okay? That's all I have to do. So simplify the add part, right? Then work the rest. It's kind of like this thing, because it's got divides in it already, these have to go first before you do the big one in the middle. That'll be the last divide. So this is nice because x minus 4 and x plus 4 eliminate. And then we just have 5x over 3x plus 8. Now in your book, they do a couple of different ways of doing this. So you're welcome to try any of it. Um, the other thing that they did, and I'll go back and show you that, is if you ever have a problem that has fractions in it and you don't want it to have fractions in it, you multiply everybody by the least common multiple. So if I look at x plus 4, x plus 4, and then x, their least common multiple is x times x plus 4. So if I multiply this piece times x over x plus 4, and I multiply this piece times x, and x plus 4, and I multiply this piece times x, and an x plus 4. These are on bottom, right, on top. So the x plus 4 and the x minus 4 goes away, and that leaves me with a 5x on top. The x plus 4 and the x plus 4 go away. 1 times x is x. The x and the x goes away, and that leaves me with 2 times x plus 4, which is 2x plus 8. And then I just simplify. 3x plus 8. You can always take anything that has a fraction in it, if you don't want the fraction, multiply by the common denominator. So if you had 1 half x squared plus uh, 3 fifths x plus 2, if I don't want that 5 and that 2 in there, the next least common thing that 2 and 5 have in common is 10. So if I just multiply everybody by 10, it's going to give me an equivalent expression that doesn't have fractions. 10 times a half is 5x squared. 10 times 5 thirds. 5 goes into 5 once, goes into 10 twice. 2 times 3 is 6x. And 10 times 2 is 20. These are equal to each other. And one of them doesn't have fractions. It's in standard form, which is nice. Okay. You can always multiply everybody in the expression by the fraction that you don't want to have and it'll get rid of it, okay? Whew. Complexes. Take your time, give it a pause, try them, come back, see what goes on. All right, here's what's gonna happen. Because they all have a number in the bottom, I'm gonna pick the next number that they can all both, most, or all both be and change it that way. So, uh, what can six and three and five and 10 be? Well, the next thing 10 can be is 30, and they can all be 30. So I need to multiply by 10 over 10. I need to multiply, or by 30, actually, sorry. Multiply by 30 over 30. Nope, just 30, not over. That's an idiot. Multiply everybody by 30. That'll get rid of all of those numbers. So 6 goes into 30 5 times, so that's 5x. 3 goes into 30 10 times, so that's minus 10x. 5 goes into 36 times, so that's 6x. And 10 goes into 33 times, 3 is 21. You can pull out a 5. Actually, you can't because they're like terms. 5x minus 10x is negative 5x. And on the bottom, we can pull out a 3, which leaves us 2x minus 7. Okay? Just like that. Don't worry about the limits on this one, but there weren't any, because there weren't any x's in the denominator. Well, there was one here. Well, whatever would make that denominator 0. Uh, 
to 3.5. Three point five is what it couldn't be, but that's just a weird deal. We're not even going to worry about it. Now in this one, I'm going to go ahead and make them like denominators, and then add them together, and then change it. Because all I need to do is do an x over an x, and all I need to do is an x over an x. So now it's two minus four x over x divided by two plus three x over x. And we're going to stay, change, flip, those cross. Uh, we could rearrange this front piece, but at least pulls a 2 out. And then we got 1 minus 2x. And on the bottom, nothing comes out, so it's 2 plus 3x. Stay just like that. Now, there is an x in the bottom, so we should worry about x can't be 0. That one's pretty easy. Okay. Technically, this one is x can't be 3.5. Because 3.5 fifths is the same as 7 tenths, and 7 tenths minus 7 tenths makes your dividing by 0, and that's a problem. All right, number 12. <clears throat> you can multiply what they don't have, you know, by their common, x common multiple. Or you could go ahead and solve the bottom part and then stay change flip whatever makes you happy this one's not bad because two of them have an x plus five and only one has an x minus three so we just need to multiply by those things top and bottom or you can solve the bottom i'm gonna draw a black line in here and i'm going to change colors so i'm gonna go ahead and multiply by the least common multiple which is x minus three and x plus five and then x minus 3 and x plus 5. And x minus 3 and x plus 5. So that leaves me with 2 times x plus 5, so 2x plus 10 on the bottom. And plus x minus 3. And on the top, what I'm left with, because this crossed and that crossed, is 3x minus 9. Or I'm actually going to probably pull that out. So, uh, do we have any common things? Let's see. I've got 3x minus 9. No, minus 7. 3x minus 7. Because 2x and x makes 3x. 10 minus 3 is 7. And we got 3x minus 9, so nothing eliminates. We could say 3 times x minus 3 because it factors out and do 3x minus 7, but that's about as far as we get. And x can't be 3 or negative 5. Boom. Done. That is some of the hardest stuff that we do, those complex rational fractions, dealing with those uh, exponential Irrational exponent, irrational functions is really tough because you got to expand.